Folks, welcome once again to Sunday Mass. We are on the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and, and with your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare for ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who causes the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amidst the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true happiness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shetna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a short spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our responsorial psalm, Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Lord, Lord your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels I will sing your praise, I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal, do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kingdom and your truth. When I called, you answered me, you built up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal, not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, Lord your Lord, love is eternal. Do not forsake, forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? 
For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi. And he asked the disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon C. Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, the son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, having been raised in a Jewish family which rejected all forms of idolatry, the disciples must have felt like fish out of water in such a place as Caesarea Philippi. Everywhere they looked, they would see shrines and statues and inscriptions to pagan gods, an abomination to Jews. So Jesus asks uh, this strange question, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They answered, some say you are John the Baptist, others say you are Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But Jesus doesn't correct his disciples. What he does is he asks another question. What about you? Who do you say that I am? And Simon and Peter is the only one to respond. He says, you are the Messiah, the Christ, he testifies, the Son of the living God. I imagine that Jesus was pleased with the answer. So he says to Simon, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you to the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah, not yet at least. Two things are happening here, folks. The church was born with Peter as its leader, and the sacrament of reconciliation was born as well. Thanks be to God. But when Jesus talks about church, the word ecclesia means the calling or assembly of people, not the building of buildings. Over the centuries, we have built magnificent, awesome looking structures and all to the honor and glory of God. In fact, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, from what I understand, is the largest church ever built, accommodating some 55,000 worshipers at Mass inside. And it is a magnificent testament to man's ability to build. But I said, as I said, the word church has nothing to do with buildings. It's about people. So then, Jesus calls us to be church, and in doing so, to be a light to the nations. We are called to be Jesus Christ to any and all whom we meet in our speech, in our actions, in our way of life. All this should be reflecting 
the person of Jesus Christ, who never belittled people, never used profanity to talk about people, who was concerned about the poor in the world, welcomed strangers and foreigners, and talked always about how God is love, and who, who he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him or her. Secondly, Jesus calls us to be a community of love. Once you become a follower of Christ, you are one in heart, mind, and spirit with every follower of Christ all over the world throughout time and history. We cannot follow Christ and be selfish and look out for our own self-interest. We cannot follow Christ when we look down to others. We cannot follow Christ if we discriminate against people uh, regardless of their race, creed, color, or sexuality. We are a community that spans 2,000 years of history and covers every nation, every skin color, every language, every nationality, and every social class on earth. In other words, as church, we are one in spirit, in love, and compassion. In December of 2019, a five-year-old boy named Michael was adopted out of the foster care system in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's always great news for me when somebody's adopted. But Michael, Michael's adoption was extraordinary. When Michael's foster parents told his kindergarten teacher that the adoption hearing was coming up, the kindergarten teacher arranged for every child in Michael's class to attend the hearing and to show their support for Michael. The kids loved him very much. He was a sweet, sweet, sweet kid. So it was only appropriate that, uh, that these kids attend that special day in court. Imagine the judge's surprise when he entered the courtroom, uh, when he entered the courtroom for a standard adoption hearing and saw 39 five-year-old kids waving red paper hearts in support of Michael. The judge even took the time to ask the children to share what Michael meant to them. And that day, Michael was adopted. So folks, that's what it means to be church. When you become a baptized member and a follower of Jesus, you are no longer alone. We have a family who shares our joys and our heartaches, and that family is the church. Finally, Jesus calls us to reach out to those who do not know him. We need Christ more than ever since we have seen so much tragedy in our world and in our country to date. Let's be the face of Jesus Christ and bring peace not only to ourselves, but to everyone we meet. And remember, the gates of hell will never overcome our church because Jesus Christ is our King and our brother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us lift up to heaven our earthly needs in prayer and discover God's redeeming love in our midst. For our church, that we may always proclaim on our lips and in our actions the love of God for every human being, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who have lost their mobility or their ability to live on their own, 
that they may support that they may support people in their basic needs that we may support people in their basic needs we pray to the lord lord, lord hear our prayer for people surviving poverty that we may generate sufficient housing and health care for the most vulnerable people in our midst we pray to the lord lord, lord hear our prayer for people who have lost faith and meaning in their lives that we may encourage all on their spiritual journeys to profess that Jesus Christ is the source of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our intentions of today's Mass, for the repose of the soul of Francisco E. Vieira, Francisco A. Vieira and Priscilla Vieira, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the health of Annette Crowley and Toby Quinley, and for the repose of the soul of David J. Fry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the repose of the soul of Scott and Vicki Seeley, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the health of my sister Pamela, who went, underwent surgery a few days ago, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. And for the repose of the soul of Frank Paul Garcia, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, be near to our people who struggle to find you. Be in our midst, support our works of justice, and show us always how to trust in you alone. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given in human hands and made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God. God. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, also work with human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God. God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously upon us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right Jesus. and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere. To give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen estate, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we echo on earth the hymn of your praise, as without end we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, the heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them by the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a 
similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his, excuse me, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francisco, our Pope, John Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with the Señora de Guadalupe, with St. Joseph, her faithful spouse, with St. Rose of Lima, whose feast day we celebrate, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the many ages, we may merit to be co heirs to life eternal, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now, at the Savior's command, Informed by his divine teaching, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your loving church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And behold, the Lamb of Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should ask me under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other.